Hello and welcome to the DIY Investing YouTube channel. We are working through every company in the S&P 500 and today is Cognizant Technology Solutions Corporation, ticker CTSH. Over the next few minutes, I'll discuss my thoughts on both the valuation of this company and its business quality. First thing I notice is that the market cap is $35 billion and the EV is $33 billion, so you have some net cash on this business, which is actually quite attractive. It's operating in the IT services space. Let's learn a little bit more about what they do. They provide professional services, including consulting and technology and outsourcing services in North America, Europe, and internationally. Four segments, financial services, healthcare, products, resources, and communications. Um, they provide customer service enhancement, robotic process automation, analytics, um, drive operational improvements, provide solutions to all sorts of companies. <laughs> That doesn't really tell me much about what they're doing, um, but basically services, IT, outsourcing, so maybe it's like, is this like call centers? Um, not exactly clear. So let's go on and see what the numbers can tell us. So if we look at return on invested capital, this actually looks really, really good. So you have 20 straight years of profits. That's always a very good sign. But what's really interesting to me is so you start, you do have a downward trend over the last two decades, but 20 straight years of profits is quality marker. You peaked at 28% return on invested capital in 2005. You hit a bottom in 2020 with return on invested capital of 11%. But what's really interesting to me is that the lowest year in 20 years is 11%. That's actually really, really good. I'm looking for an average over the last 10 years of 10% or more. And their worst year was 11%. That's very attractive. Last year, 16%. Very, very good numbers here. So it's okay that the return on invested capital is coming down. Maybe their newer projects are getting lower returns than older projects. That's quite common. But the fact that they're still at 11% is very, very good. Now, moving on to 10-year median returns, all of these look quite amazing. Return on invested capital is 16%. Return on equity of 19%. Very good numbers here, all selling me it's a high-quality company. Now, What's interesting is you have a P.E. ratio of 15.8. Call it 16. P.E. of 16 is a reasonable P.E. ratio. I like to buy companies at a P.E. of 15 or less, but 16 right in that ballpark. What's really nice here is that you're able to combine a P.E. of 16 with double digit revenue growth, double digit free cash flow growth, double digit EPS growth. All of this is a very good sign that this price might actually be undervalued, let alone at fair value. If you can buy a company at a PE of 16 that's growing double digits, and if they can sustain this over the next decade, you're going to do very, very well because you're growing faster than the S&P 500, but you're being priced at less than the S&P 500, and you have a high-quality company. Everything here is set up to be a very attractive future return. Now, with that said, we can see over the last decade that your first four years of the decade had 20% revenue growth, but then the next six years all had below 10% revenue growth. So it's possible, besides 2021, it's possible that the growth of the future isn't going to be double digits. So it's something you need to think about that maybe the double, you know, growth in the future is something in the more range of 8% or 6%, something in that range, maybe 8% um, mm. instead of this 11% number. But well, you'd have to do your own analysis there to get an idea. You've done more than doubled your gross profit over the decade. That's pretty good. And your operating profits more than doubled. Your EPS more than doubled. Um, all of that reflects you know, this double digit EPS growth looking very solid there. They have started to pay a dividend, which is attractive. So they're starting to see that they have some excess capital. They can't put it all into growth. Good things here. Everything I've seen is very attractive so far. If you're enjoying this video, please hit that like button. Don't forget to subscribe and ring the bell. You need to ring the bell so you can notify as I upload new videos each and every week. I've not been hitting them every day as I would like. So it means that if you want to be notified when they get uploaded, you need to ring the bell. You need to be subscribed. I'm working through every company in the SP 500. So if you want to learn about the companies you like, you need to be subscribed. So let's dive into the income statement. We can see pretty solid growth here, cost of goods sold, holding pretty steady. Um, you've more than two extra SGNA, so they're not holding that down with their growth. It's something to be aware of. Um, they're having to grow SGNA. It's not like you're seeing a lot of operating leverage here. It's growing about in line with revenue growth. Um, they do have some net interest income, so it does look like they are receiving some money from having that excess cash. I assume we're going to see some excess cash on the balance sheet. And what I like to see here is at least since 2016, let's call it 2015, we started to buy back shares and those share buybacks are boosting 
the EPS line even faster. So very good signs of positive capital allocation there. You do see these cash and cash equivalents, you know, 2.6 billion here, short-term investments, accounts receivable. So you have a very cash positive balance sheet here, very little long-term debt. So you have 600 million in long-term debt versus 1.8 billion in cash. So you have that excess cash on the balance sheet no leverage on this business, which is really, really good. You have only 2.1 billion in property plan and equipment. Now it has tripled over the course of the last decade, but compared to the size of the earnings, you know, 2.1 billion in PPE, but your net income is 2.1 billion. Again, that's a very strong return on tangible capital. I like what I'm seeing here in terms of the business model. It looks like your deterioration in return on invested capital is primarily coming from acquisitions. You have a big jump in 2013 to 2014. This is growth in goodwill, growth in intangibles, but on the tangible assets, this is a very high returning business. Now, cash flow statement. Let's see. You do have this depreciation. It has been growing pretty solidly. So it's something to be aware of that you are depreciating assets um, and that depreciation is higher than your pp and &E expenses. So maybe they're underspending. You'd want to do a little bit of extra research in that area. And you do see these acquisitions in 2014, 2018. They're pretty steadily making acquisitions all the time. You do see that they started really buy back that stock. Um, in the early years, it looks like it mainly offset stock-based compensation. But in the recent years, since 2016, it's really started to drive down the number of shares outstanding as they've ramped up that stock buybacks and they start issuing dividends. So everything here looks really, really good. I find this company quite attractive to me. A services businesses, because they can grow without a lot of capital, are very attractive. Now, they might be limited on employees. They might be limited on customers, all that sort of thing. That can limit your top end growth in the long run. But depending upon the runway here, this could be a very attractive business. So for me, Cognizant is going on my watch list. If you like this video, hit that like button. You have to like every video that you're enjoying because those likes tell the YouTube algorithm that this is good content and you want more people to see it. If you like it as well, you need to be subscribed. Ring that bell. You can get notified as I upload new videos each and every week. You can also watch all my old past videos as I've been working through the whole S&P 500. I have a playlist of those videos available. You can start watching through my whole backlog of them today. If you enjoy this content, if you like the tool that I'm using here, it is QuickFS. I have partnered with QuickFS with a referral program. If you'd like to be referred to QuickFS, click the link in the show notes. That's the top link to quickfs.net and you can sign up there. Sign up through that link and then it lets them know that I sent you there. So I love this tool. I use it for my investing. This is what I'm doing through this account. If you're enjoying it, hit that like button, subscribe, and I will see you next week.